Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about pacemakers. You can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com or in the cardiology section of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. The purpose of pacemakers is to deliver controlled electrical impulses to specific areas of the heart to restore the normal electrical activity and improve the heart function. They consist of what's called a pulse generator, and that's the little pacemaker box. And then they have pacing leads that carry the electrical signals from the pulse generator to the relevant part of the heart. This little box, or the pulse generator, is implanted under the skin, most commonly in the left anterior chest wall, or the left axilla. And the wires are implanted into the relevant chambers of the heart. Modern pacemakers have a computer that monitors the electrical activity, and tailors the function of the pacemaker to the electrical activity that already exists in the heart. So basically, if the heart is already working perfectly, no intervention is provided by the pacemakers. The batteries in a pacemaker last about five years, so quite a long time, and they don't interact with day-to-day -day electrical activities, like using a mobile phone. But they might be a contraindication for MRI scans, due to the powerful magnets in the MRI, and electrical interventions like TENS machines and diathermy that's used in surgery. Many of the modern pacemakers are MRI compatible, but you need to check before requesting an MRI for somebody with a pacemaker whether their machine will be compatible. It's worth noting that it's essential that pacemakers are removed prior to cremation in deceased patients. So on the cremation form, one of the most important tasks is to confirm and sign to say that you've checked the deceased patient doesn't have a pacemaker, and if they do, to check whether it's been removed. You'll hear stories when you become a junior doctor about pacemakers that have been left in, and when the patient has been cremated, they blow up the entire crematorium. What are the indications for a pacemaker? Symptomatic bradycardias. Mobitz type 2 AV block, third degree heart block, heart failure where they use biventricular or triple chamber pacemakers, and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathies where they have implantable cardioverter defibrillators. There's a few different configurations of how the leads are implanted into the heart. You can have single chamber pacemakers, dual chamber pacemakers, biventricular or triple chamber pacemakers, and implantable cardioverter defibrillators. So we'll go through what those are now. Single chamber pacemakers have a lead in a single chamber, and this is either in the right atrium or the right ventricle. They're placed in the right atrium if the AV conduction in the heart is normal and the issue is with the sinoatrial node. So by doing this, they stimulate depolarization in the right atrium, and then this electrical activity passes to the left atrium through the AV node to the ventricles, and normal contraction of the heart is stimulated. If the AV conduction in the patient is abnormal, they place the single chamber pacemaker in the right ventricle, and this bypasses the atrium and stimulates the ventricular contraction directly. Dual chamber pacemakers have leads in both the right atrium and the right ventricle, and this allows the pacemaker to synchronize the contractions of the atria and the ventricles. Biventricular or triple chamber pacemakers have leads in the right atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle, and these are usually used in patients with severe heart failure. And the objective is to synchronize the contractions of all the chambers to try and optimize the heart function. They're also called cardiac resynchronization therapy or CRT pacemakers, and they have quite good results for patients with severe heart failure. Implantable cardioverter defibrillators, or ICDs. ICDs continually monitor the heart and apply a defibrillator shock to cardiovert the patient back into sinus rhythm if they identify the patient has developed a shockable arrhythmia. So if the patient goes into VT, these cardiac defibrillators will deliver a shock and try and put the patient directly back into sinus rhythm. Finally, let's talk about ECG changes with pacemakers. And this is quite a common 
thing to be asked to do in one of your OSCE examinations. They'll ask you to have a look at an ECG and identify the type of pacemaker that the patient has. The pacemaker intervention on an ECG can be seen as a sharp vertical line on all the leads on the ECG as electricity is applied to the heart. So a line before the P wave indicates that a lead is in the atria and a line before the QRS complex indicates that the lead is in the ventricles. Therefore, if you have a line before the P or the QRS complex but not the other, you know it's a single chamber pacemaker and you know the location of that lead. And if you have a line before the P and the QRS complex, you know it's a dual chamber pacemaker. So it's quite straightforward really. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.